Art House was open sourced studio for pretty much whoever wanted to roll in there and get make something. Um, the Art House was. It was like a freaking tear down building on a bikini. We started painting in and then it just became kind of like a clubhouse, I guess, a party house. It got it went through so many different stages. For a while it was like very art oriented and that was the best reflection of the spirit of Venice at the time. It was freedom, it was full creative freedom. There was lots of flavor. For me it was kind of like the clubhouse that you envision when you're a kid. Awesome. Definitely had this kind of Andy Warhol factory sort of feel to it. provided for the community a, a sort of central meeting up point for artists and musicians. Anybody on the sort of fringe that gave uh, Venice its cachet of, of being a, a center of creativity and spontaneity and excitement. It was the reason that uh, those people are now no longer here because they can't afford to be here. And sharing yeah. and putting up their work and I think it added a lot you know a lot of character and uh, something unique to the environment that you like I didn't see that anywhere else so you know I just got to let loose have fun and be exposed to a lot of uh, creative energy which made me feel a lot more alive and creative I started taking a lot more pictures uh, started drawing some more you know wasn't just sort of st stuck in the banal world of career. When the art house was vacant, nothing was going on there. They were planning on doing a restaurant there and they were going to tear down the building. So this is in the period before the building was torn down, obviously. That it was just sitting there. No one would rent it for anything. So I approached Fran and I said, you know, could I, you know, kind of clean up the building a little bit on the inside, maybe do a pop-up? And he said, sure, you can, you know, do it for 90 days, see what comes of it. Yeah, yeah, we had lots of shows, lots of really good shows. I had a lot of people who would come in, kind of just say right off the bat, like, hey, I want to be involved, what can I do? How can I be a part of this? I want to be a part of this. It was very, very freeing and liberating, and uh, and it had depth. It had meaning. It had had purpose. And it was people doing what they wanted. There were people of all ages, all backgrounds there. People making art there. Some were great artists. Some were beginning artists. It was all levels. There was no nobody was turned down. There was no line. The, yeah, Lost Boys, Lost Boys. Definitely felt like that, Neverland. There were, because there were always people coming through there and there were always people wanting to bring their friends to show them the, the freaky show that was going on, there were, there were a lot of people cross-pollinating and a lot of interesting conversations to be had and a lot of connections uh, to be made. So. Uh, it was a it was a meeting place that wasn't the, where you could have a, a conversation. Uh, it wasn't a bar. Um, nobody was selling you anything. There just aren't that many things like that around. So when they can be created, they must be created with all possible haste. Like, people just wanted a piece of that craziness in their, like, to take with them. As I look at, look back on it, there were probably no filters at the time. So it was almost too free. And that's why I say, for me, it became, uh, 
it almost became like a runaway train. It was, you know, it could have, anything could have happened. Anything could have happened. The energy level around me like was like a snowball effect. It just got more and more and more and more and more and more and people were covered in blood and people were fucking wasted and I was throwing people out and people were smashing each other over the heads with bottles and You know, of course, we had a lot of uh, conflicts and commentary from like the neighborhood around here. The homeowner and renters were like, "What's this squat full of anarchist weirdos doing on our street? It's, this is a good street. It's expensive here." And these, uh... and then we had, you know, of course, remember we had all the police coming in virtually every night at around two or three a.m. going, "What's going on here? You need a, where's your business license? I'm like this isn't a business, man. This is a studio. You wanna?" You want to write a poem? You know, you want to do painting over here? We can set you up real fast, you know? So that really kind of got up the nose of the police because they, they couldn't figure a, 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 a legitimate way to just, you know, clamp us down or... $1,200 ticket, $1,200 ticket if we're loud. And that was the first place that you, that was where you did your first painting, yeah? That is where I did my first painting. That was, I did art when I was in school, and I, w I mean, when I was a kid, you know, in grade school. Well, at that point, it became a place where, you know, to give space for artists to collaborate and to do their work. You know, and bring the art or keep the art in Venice. That's really where, where that was at. I think because it was a temporary space and because it was like a teardown, it was beautiful in the way that we, almost like you didn't care, so you didn't have to maintain, you didn't go home to sleep because you didn't know when it was like the last time. I just paint it all day, all night. I just paint it. And, uh, yeah, you didn't really give a shit about anything, so it wasn't a lot of pressure to, like, oh, we gotta, we gotta really make this good, you know? Like, it was like, this is gone any day now, so let's just go at it. And it, that's why it was special. It was, be it was that I don't give a fuck kind of complete, open, artistic flow that made it what it was. I think it was that we had so little of our own, but we were still able to create this really inspiring commotion for other people. Just like selling and making art out of the little shack and getting stuff done. And Jules Muck and James Mathers were so productive and so were the rest of us. There were always people just kind of hanging around and taking naps around the building, but there was a lot of work that got done there. and. A lot of new projects that I don't think any of us had thought about diving into before the art house. It really like opened you up because you're making art right in front of the entire community when you're working on a busy street like Abbot Kinney. Venice kind of like is living off of its reputation as an artist community and you know in reality most all, most of the artists have been forced out because it's freaking expensive as hell to live here 
it created a, a little window of opportunity for people that aren't walking around with a freaking wad of money or a credit card in their pocket um, to come and be and do. It's been quite, quite, quite a contract. Possibility. Lighting the art house on fire. Destroying the place. Destroy. As artfully as possible. We loved it. We loved you, art house. We loved you, art house. Police have shut us down. This is officially the end of Art House. Now, in the year of our Lord 2010, we face the reality of the matter in front of us, which is that there is no music, there is no art, there is nothing left for us to crawl into a deep, dark hole and forever remain there, alone. YouTube. And cold and dying. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, sweet memory of what once was. Goodbye. And all, every single one of those people, I have hats off to them. I love you. I love you all. I think you're great. I'm very proud. I'm proud to have participated. I'm proud to have been around you. You're all amazing, amazing people. Brought the art house tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget that place. It totally changed my life. It really... Oh, show your tattoo. Oh, yeah, I got my art house tattoo. Right there. But, yeah. <laughs> it really helped me open up. Very creatively stim stimulating because of that, and it definitely it definitely changed my life. That's for sure. I met a lot of people. I made a lot of art. I made a shitload of art. I made 150 paintings at least in three months. A lot of new projects that I don't think any of us had thought about diving into before the art house really like opened you up because you're making art right in front of the entire community when you're working on a busy street like advocate. No, I mean I just want to say that that was, that was really cool, it was really good to be a part of it, you know. Really the truth about the art house is in the stories of the art house, like different specific moments that were so beautiful and I love running into people that are like, do you remember when Nana was running across the street naked to the art house and like da 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 da? Yeah man. That was like little bits of like magic that happened. you're here, you know, looking at it, talking about it, whatever. But it was a moment. It was a moment in time when the real estate on Abbott Kenny was going up, like you said, and everybody, you know, all commercial, and all of a sudden here's this little house on Abbott Kenny that is this little creative space to 